Welcome back to Biomechanics on Catalyst University. In this video, we're going to answer the following question. What osteokinematic movement is this therapist, Dr. Yu, trying to restore in the picture? Now, in the previous two videos, we cover three examples where we're given some kind of osteokinematic movement. So we're given the specific movement. And then we have to predict what direction, and also what bone, we have to mobilize in order to improve that particular movement. So we're going from the specific movement that's given to predicting the mobilization direction. Now we're going to go the reverse direction and we're going to be given, either told or shown a picture of the particular mobilization direction, but then we're going to have to go the reverse direction and determine what specific movement uh, the therapist is trying to restore uh, in that picture or the description. Okay, So if you haven't gone and watched the previous videos, I highly recommend that you do so before watching this video. Even though here we're going in the opposite direction on this flowchart, uh, we're going to do some very similar things. Uh, the only real difference here is we first have to determine the joint being mobilized. Okay, We're not going to be able to determine the direction immediately, but we can at least figure out the joint. In this picture right here, it looks like Dr. Yu is applying a force on the posterior thigh. Uh, what bone is in there? Well, that's going to be the femur. And so right above that, we would have the hip. And so most likely, we're talking about the hip joint. Okay, And remember the two bones that articulate in the hip joint, or the iliofemoral joint. We've got the head of the femur and the acetabulum of the pelvis. Okay, And so we need to figure out, again, which one's concave, which one's convex. And then from there, we can determine whether or not the roll and the slide are in opposite or same directions. Okay, so we know we're dealing with the hip joint, we've got a femur, and we've got an acetabulum. Now, in that case, the acetabulum is concave. Remember, it's just a big socket, okay? And then the ball is the head of the femur, which would be convex. The next thing we do is we have to determine out of those two bones, the head of the femur and the acetabulum, which one's mobile and which one's static, or at least less mobile. And so the mobile bone is just going to be the one where the therapist is applying the force. Well, he's applying the force on the thigh, which is where the femur is. So because that's where the force is being applied, the femur is going to be the mobile bone, okay? because we always are mobilizing the mobile bone at the joint. So this case, the femur, or the head of the femur really, is the mobile part. The static part is the acetabulum. Okay? And so we always want to form a sentence. We've got a mobile bone moving on a static bone. Mobile moving on a static. Well, in this case, it's a convex femur moving on a concave acetabulum. Okay? We wouldn't say a concave acetabulum moving on a convex femur because that would imply something static moving on something mobile. Well, if it's static, it can't move. It has to be something mobile moving on something static. Okay, and we always form a sentence like that. If you're just starting out in this video, we did the same thing in these first two videos in the first three examples. Okay, so we've got a convex femur moving on a concave acetabulum. Now, we can use this sentence, this information, to figure out if the roll of the slide are in the same or opposite directions. And the rule is, if it's something convex moving on something concave, they're opposite. And someone once told this to me, I know I'm a broken record saying this, that if convex comes first, convex moving on concave, x, you don't want to run into your x, so you go the opposite direction. All right? Convex, you move the opposite direction. So that means that if we've got a convex bone moving on a concave bone, that means the roll and the slide are going to be in opposite directions. I'll show you the other example. If we, for for instance, had a concave bone moving on a convex bone, the roll on the slide would be in, sa in the same direction. Okay? And the way I remember this is, since concave is first, this is the only one of the two words, concave or convex, that has two of the same letter, two of the same letter. That is, concave has two Cs, convex doesn't have any of the same letters. All right? So if it's concave moving on convex, Roll and slide are in the same direction, but here we've got uh, a convex bone, the head of the femur, moving on a concave bone, the acetabulum, so that means the roll and the slide are in opposite directions. And now, 
we actually have pretty much everything we need to solve the problem or solve the question. So look at this picture. What direction is he doing this mobilization in? Well, he's hitting the back part of the thigh, so he's hitting it on the posterior side, but what direction is it going? Okay, It's actually going toward the patient's anterior side. Okay, So the mobilization is anterior. Now remember, the slide, this is just a definition, the slide is always in the same direction as the mobilization. So if the mobilization is in the anterior direction, by definition, the slide is anterior. Okay, Slide is anterior. Now we just determined that the roll and the slide are in opposite directions. So if the slide is anterior, the roll is posterior. So again, they're in opposite directions, so if the uh, slide is anterior, the roll is posterior. Okay? And since the roll is posterior, remember the roll is always in the same direction as the mobile bone moves. So just imagine for a second, stand up, and imagine moving your femur more posteriorly. What movement would you be doing? Well, if you just stand up and move your femur, that is move your thigh in the posterior direction, you're performing a hip extension. Okay? In this case, this would be for mobilizing uh, left hip extension. And so we can now say that the movement that this therapist is trying to restore in the picture is hip extension. Okay? So all we did here is we did the same rules, really, and we just did them in the reverse direction. And overall, with any of these kinds of problems, really the bulk of the question is really just kind of getting some information. Okay? We need our convex, concave rules. We need those to determine whether or not it's the roll and the slide are in opposite or same directions. But once we have all that information, this flow chart right here actually goes pretty much within a minute. It's really short. Okay? And so this bottom flow chart going from the mobilization to the specific movement that he's trying to restore, that's if you're given uh, the mobilization direction, whether in words or in a picture, and then you have to predict the specific movement. If you want more information on how to do the reverse, where you're given the specific movement, like shoulder extension, and asked to predict the direction of the mobilization, go back and watch the previous two videos. But hopefully this made sense to you. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.